challenges stalling empowerment efforts among women and girls in Africa remain an undertone in accessing sexual and reproductive health and rights commonly known as SRHR. Through robust efforts in shaping discourse and countering regressive forces against gender equality, we lead program seeks to reverse this in Africa, Middle East and Central America. As Femnet, we have been implementing uh, various programs on sexual reproductive health and rights and sexual reproductive health justice. So we have been working in partnership with CEDA Sweden, where we, uh, we, we had a four-year program on sexual reproductive health and rights accountability to sexual reproductive health and rights and bodily autonomy and we implemented this program in five countries. In West Africa, we are working in Niger, as well as Nigeria, and in East Africa, we are working in Kenya and Uganda, and in Southern Africa, we are working in Mozambique. The program targets young women who live with HIV and AIDS, young women who have a disability, persons identifying themselves as lesbian, bisexual, trans or intersex, or women affected by displacement. We're currently working at WASA IDP camp, and in WASA IDP camp, they have over 5,000 population, and 70% are women and children. And most of those women, an average of them have over six children before the age of 25. Working with those women, we recognize that there are a lot of uh, culturally past myths and misconceptions that they hold even when it comes to issue on family planning. But we had to have a conversation to say, oh, why not space in between? And then also the woman having autonomy over her own body. Discussing sexual reproductive health issues, which include family planning, within that setup is a taboo. And so you, you, there is limited information when it's come to now family planning. The distance from a health facility to the household level, it's very far. So I will ask myself, I have maybe $2 or $5. Do I use it to buy food? Or I use it to get a, a, a border border or a, a vehicle to take me to facility to go and take the medication? or to go and access the family planning. Where does my priority lies? Despite legalization of abortion in most of the African countries, a lot of girls and women still cannot access such services. This is impeded by hardline traditional and religious beliefs, poverty, among other factors contributing to high mortality rates resulting from unsafe abortions and related complexities. So what basically PYWV does on safe abortion right now is like sharing of information, but we are rather focused on sharing information on, on how to in, uh, protect themselves when engaging in sex, such that the girl is not getting to a point where they are pregnant and they know they do not have the means to carry this pregnancy to term, or maybe their parents will not support them. So we, the way we, we approach the issues of abortion is first of all like share information and clear, create awareness and, and, and on safe sexual practices and you know, and the different forms of contraceptives, and where a girl can access them, and do referrals maybe for you know for for a, for a young woman who probably may need uh, to access to 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 have to get a contraceptive method. In Mozambique, six point seven percent of maternal mortality is attributed to unsafe abortion and related complications, while such cases in Niger contribute to ten percent of maternal mortality rate. Unsafe abortion in Nigeria contributes to more than 512 maternal deaths per 100,000 live births, resulting to over 61,000 women deaths every year. 
Despite criminalization of female genital mutilation in most African countries, some singled out communities still practice FGM. Mais je sais que ça a un impact négatif euh, sur la santé de la femme ou de la jeune fille victime de ça. Parce que, euh, comme vous le savez, euh, l'impact négatif, c'est que parfois, cette fille-là ne, ne parvient pas à jouir de sa vie sexuelle en tant que telle avec son mari. Et aussi, il euh, y a vraiment les problèmes euh, lorsque cette femme-là est prête à accoucher. Elle peut même euh, perdre la vie en donnant naissance, compte tenu du fait qu'elle a déjà ses séquelles liées à la mutilation du vie. Among the courier community in Kenya, 84% of women have undergone FGM or are affected by the practice, while in central Mozambique, 98.8% of women have practiced elongation of inner lips of the female external genitalia, usually done before fast menstruation. Uh, if you're looking at harmful traditional practices like FGM, which by the way has been mod modernized, you'll be surprised that in countries like the UK, uh, Finland, uh, they do practice FGM because <laughs> the migration that's happening, this cross-border FGM where Kenya are doing FGM is illegal, but when you go to Somalia, the border, young women can be circumcised. FGM issue is a society issue, is a social challenge that policy is good, but policy is not the final thing. You'll find somebody who believes that it is a passage of rights. You really need to find a way of demystify the myths of the medical sanctions around FGM. There's a lot of engagement that needs to be done with the gatekeepers who are men. There's a lot of engagement that needs to be done with the older generation who are so rooted in these practices and they don't see the harm in them, hence affecting the overall development of young women and girls in our society today. When we then switch to issue on gender-based violence, even amongst the women, they felt it was okay for them to be beaten by their husbands, it was okay for the husband to not even, oh, once he has married you, then why does he even have to take consent, for example? So these were uh, wildly held myths and misconceptions in the camp, that, and the women just take it as a norm. Serem violadas, nós somos vítimas de violências sexuais por não podermos nos defender diante a essas causas ou diante dessa pessoa. Então, Por ser vítima da violência sexual, eu fico grávida e é claro que eu tenho que abortar porque é uma gravidez precoce, é uma gravidez indesejada. Temos um caso, esse caso tivemos no ano passado, né? Quase a moça sofreu uma violação sexual até ela engravidou, engravidou. É, mas foi um desafio porque ela tivemos que integrar a ela e integramos a ela e também teve que entrar num psiquiatra para pelo menos estudar a mente dela porque é, aquilo ali já perturbava, perturbava muito. Cases of rape meted on women living with disabilities have also been reported and in unfortunate instances, such criminal act leaves them infected with HIV and AIDS. A information that I have is that about 47% of the women who are 15 or 24 years old suffer violence based on gender. Então, mesmo aqui na instituição, nós temos casos de raparigas, de mulheres jovens que acabaram sofrendo a violência baseada no gênero por conta do HIV. Muitas delas já revelaram o ser o Estado para o seu parceiro, sofreram vários tipos de violência, como violência econômica, parceiros que, que deixaram de cuidar dos seus próprios filhos porque a esposa é seropositiva, uh, sofreram violência física, sofreram violência psicológica, vários tipos de violência. In some of the countries that we work in as Femnet, for example, in Uganda, 18% of annual births are adolescent girls. And in Kenya, between January and February 2022, last year, um, there were reported cases of 45,754 cases of adolescents' uh, pregnancies. And out of these, uh, 2,000 2, of these cases were reported as sexual gender-based violence.
since the introduction of ARVs and prevention of mother to child transmission that the, 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 the young people, the children who are saved and who have been on medication since then, they are now young people and they are now teenagers. And if you look at the numbers for new HIV infections, you'll find that young girls are more affected. And they, they are the group that we should really care about. And that's why we can't finish speaking about it. We can't finish looking at these issues and we leave women and girls out of the conversation. Nós fazemos treinamentos com raparigas vivendo com HIV dos 15 aos 25 anos uh, sobre direitos sexuais e reprodutivos, onde nesses treinamentos nós ensinamos a elas os seus direitos sexuais e reprodutivos, falamos da questão do HIV SIDA, falamos do tratamento antirretroviral. For us we work in uh, in Bondo, Bondo Sia County, Sia County you are aware is around the lake Lake Victoria and we've heard about sex for fish and then fish for sex and because of um, poor, in, poor income from like the communities and rural setup so you find that a lot of yes there's a quite a percentage of people who are born with it but also there's a percentage that have gotten it through the way um, in, in their life so there are a lot of sexual activities going on among young people so what we are doing is just we're trying to ensure to work with them with our counselors still because we also organize for outreaches and also in villages. So outreaches is where we go to the village for accessibility also because we're working with the two rights holders. We're taking the services to where they are because sometimes coming to the hospital for the services is a challenge. So we work with the service providers to take the services to the, um, to the community. Oui, par rapport à la stigmatisation de ces personnes vivant avec le VIH, effectivement ces gens là sont stigmatisés au niveau des services de santé. Non seulement il y a l'ignorance pour ces personnes-là, ils ne connaissent pas le circuit de la prise en charge, la confidentialité, elle n'est pas garantie au niveau de ces services de santé. Du coup, il y a une stigmatisation pour ces personnes vivantes. In Nigeria, 2.4% of women with disabilities have HIV and AIDS, as compared to 1.4% of the men with disabilities, demonstrating that women and even those living with disabilities are likely to contract the virus more than men. Avec le VIH, en ce qui concerne les personnes handicapées, là on peut parler d'une double stigmatisation. Non seulement premièrement il y a l'handicap qui est une stigmatisation, et il y a la séropositivité encore qui se pose. Quand vous venez au niveau d'une santé pour la prise en charge, une personne vivant avec le VIH, il faut d'abord qu'on soigne les personnes qui n'ont pas de statut positif avant de soigner les autres. Ce que je voudrais dire de Crescenta, c'est ce petit déploiement que je peux dire é agradecer pela oportunidade e o que eu digo eu sou uma ser positiva eu não tenho medo não tenho vergonha de me expor acredito eu que já pude alavancar muitas jovens já pude ajudar muitas famílias a superar discriminações e estigma nos seus seus familiares HIV é um vírus que é um vírus que está inside de mim que eu não posso manejar by taking drugs. It's not making me disabled. Me motiva a ficar aqui é o, o fato de ser um espaço muito seguro, onde eu me sinto muito à vontade. Sendo uma rapariga portadora de HIV, não me sinto diferente das outras pessoas. Living with disability remains double struggle and worse when in need of medical attention and other SRHR services. Porque, é, imagine se eu tomba enceinte. Je dois aller en consultation. Alors qu'il y a plusieurs barrières, plusieurs discriminations, plusieurs marginalisations auxquelles je fais face. My experience, like other deaf women, I can remember when I went to the hospital in 2011 for my health.
I faced a lot of challenge when I was pregnant then because in the area of um, some doctors working there would send me to go to for a, a test or something and I don't understand them and they also don't understand me because I can't hear what they are saying and they'll keep talking. I'll just keep going back and forth around the facility again and again. So there's no access at a time. I just had to ignore going to the hospital even while I was pregnant. O nível de conhecimento que pessoas com deficiência têm naquilo que tem a ver com ITS, DTS e doenças contraceptivas é muito baixa. Se for a falar de porcento, diríamos que estamos ainda nos 60%. 60% porque nós ainda temos tido limitações. Ainda temos que ter alguém para nos, nos acompanhar, ainda temos que ter alguém para nos auxiliar. Ainda, a, a nossa sociedade moçambicana ainda não nos aceita completamente. The young women in Bondo with disability, their rights in Sarachar are not uh, respected because one, nobody believes that a young woman with disability has a right to get family planning, that this young woman can actually get pregnant, this young woman is sexually active. So we find that sometimes they are abused by their family, their relative, and, and, and nothing is done because after all they are disabled, they, they can't speak, they can't, they can't talk, they can't do anything. The community of women and girls with disability most of the time don't have access to knowledge, so it has affected them a lot. We are the Advocacy for Women with Disability Initiative. I've empowered them with so much knowledge. We'll let them know because most important is that you know your rights. If you don't know your sexual and reproductive health rights, you might not, even if you are not being attended to, you might not be able to question the status quo because you think that is who you are, is because of the situation and all of that. We really want to see Nigeria collaborating with Kenya, Mozambique, with Uganda, and having this regional exchange take place and ensuring that the communities of actions feel um, empowered enough and feel skilled enough to take on their advocacy efforts, not only at the national level, as they have been doing, but also at the regional and global levels. We are so grateful that the digital world is very broad and anyone can have access to it. Even as we continue with these conversations, we'll be able to invite more people. We'll be able to amplify, you know, tell stories to, you know, beyond even Africa. Let us reach the people who are, who are able to change policies. LGBTQI plus and sex work are the emerging fronts in sexual and reproductive health and rights. Because of sexism and patriarchy, it hinders a lot of things. Women are not able to speak out. They are not able to go to police stations to, you know, uh, make reports because we've had cases of when, you know, women make reports of you know, sexual abuse, and then the case is turned around. I think the most difficult case I've ever dealt with was the case of a person who had lost his parents, who was living with um, his uh, grandmom, and his grandmom got to find out of his sexuality by going through his phone. He was, put, was tortured, basically. He was tortured. She set his feet on fire, made it impossible for him to communicate with his friends, it took a long time before he was able to get access to a phone to call for help. But at that time, you know, he was not able to walk again. Porque é, é um ponto que inquieta muita gente e acabamos perdendo muitas pessoas da comunidade LGBT que o mais plus por por medo. Primeiro, o seguinte: esses jovens adolescentes não se assumem à família muito cedo e Se, uma, se um dos jovens está, por exemplo, infectado com o vírus de HIV, como se não bastasse, é LGBT, ele já se, se condena. Meu Deus, eu vou ser rejeitada, porque primeiro, eu sou, eu, sou, eu, sou, eu, sou, eu sou da comunidade LGBT, segundo, eu sou portadora do vírus de HIV, como que eu vou, fazer, como que eu vou transmitir, como que eu vou dar essa notícia à, à, à minha família? 
If found practicing homosexuality in Kenya and Nigeria, offenders face a jail term of up to 14 years, while genital surgery on intersex babies is punishable by a 5,000 US dollars fine in Kenya. Okay, d'accord. Donc, au Niger, franchement, et jusque là, en matière de LGBT, ça reste. Parce que les LGBT n'osent pas sortir dire que je suis LGBT aujourd'hui, même dans sa propre maison, à plus forte raison, sortir et dehors pour réclamer un droit. Ceux qui sont en train de le faire, ce sont les réfugiés et les déplacés. Extreme cases of punishment against homosexuality is in Sharia states of Nigeria, where punishment may result to death by stoning, as same-sex relationships is considered as sodomy. Mais un gouvernement, on ne force pas un gouvernement, mais on essaie d'attirer de, 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 l'attention pour leur dire que voilà, si on ne fait pas attention, et, et la maladie risque d'être propagée, puisque s'il n'y a pas la prise en charge, tout le monde n'est pas épargné. LGBTQI rights is human rights, and human rights are LGBTQI rights. You know, queer people are not advocating for something that is different. They only advocate for the same rights and dignity that is afforded to every human being. I think on engaging religious leaders, it's also important to know that um, when the Pope mentioned that um, being LGBTQIQ plus is not a criminal, I think it sent a very strong message and signal to the religious community who are always pushing for prosecution of uh, LGBTQI plus. So we should allow um, populations in all their diversities to be able to coexist and to also create safe spaces uh, for them to access the services that they deserve within our community.